Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Well, a very warm welcome to this service this morning, coming to you from the Church of St Andrew's Fulham Fields. It's wonderful to be back in church. This is the first time we've been able to take a service in church for nearly two months, so it's very special. It does mean, however, that only clergy are allowed back in at the moment, and only one at a time. So although Reverend Anne will also be taking part in this service, we are preparing it separately, so we're not in the building at the same time. But we are glad to be here, but we do long for the time when we will all be able to be back in filling this space and worshipping God together. For now, we remember that God is in our midst, wherever we are, wherever you are at home, and it's good to have you joining with us. Today marks the beginning of Christian Aid Week, and so we're taking that as an opportunity to have a bit of an international flavour to our service this morning. We're going to be thinking about some of our brothers and sisters around the world, and later on we'll be hearing from uh, some friends in Zimbabwe about how they're coping during lockdown. So as life continues to be uncertain and fragile, we begin by reminding ourselves as we sing our first hymn led by members of the St Andrew's Core Leavensong Choir, we remind ourselves that Christ is our sure foundation. Let's sing together.
Let us join together in the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now come to our prayers of penitence. We have all fallen short this week, even today, and this is our chance to come before God and ask for forgiveness and receive that and a fresh start. Let us pray. Lord God, our Maker and our Redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as God's forgiven people let's join in saying together the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and his to his people on earth. God, God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, of the Son of the Father, God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. or prayer, for especially for today. Heavenly Father, stir our imagination that we, we may feel more deeply for the needs of others as we put ourselves in their place. Give us hearts of self-forgetting compassion which move us to love as you have loved us to the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
We're now going to have our first lesson read for us by Mark Maitland from the Old Testament. The first reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24. Moses brings the word of God to the people of Israel as they prepare to enter the promised land, reminding them of their responsibilities before God. You shall not deprive a resident alien or an orphan of justice. You shall not take a widow's garment in pledge. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore I command you to do this. When you reap harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be left for the alien, the orphan, and the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all your undertakings. When you beat your olive trees, do not strip what is left. It shall be for the alien, the orphan, and the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, do not glean what is left. It shall be for the alien, the orphan, and the widow. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I am commanding you to do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now hear the hymn, Beauty for Brokenness. Do join in if you are able. Oh, I'm 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and love your neighbour as yourself. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right teacher, you have truly said that he is one and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love, love one's neighbour as oneself. This is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifice. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God after that, no one dared to ask him any question. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Over these past few weeks, we've had a lot of things on our minds, haven't we? We may have been worried at times over where our food is going to come from. What if we get ill? Will the NHS be able to cope? How are the children going to be able to continue their education adequately? Will I have a job at the end of this? And that's to say nothing of those who are living at risk at home. How can they be kept safe? The remarkable thing about these times that we're living in now is that these anxieties are shared pretty much universally all over the world. Most countries in the world have been or are in lockdown. And these same questions are being asked by billions of people at the same time. I don't know if there's ever been a time in our history when we have been so aware of our shared humanity, whoever we are and wherever we are. The difference, however, is that depending on where we live, the answers to these questions will be quite different. We are very fortunate here. We have a superb health service, which has coped brilliantly with all the challenges. There is, despite panic buying, there is now plenty of food in the shops. Schools have done an amazing job at enabling homeschooling to take place, let alone what the parents are doing as well. And the government is providing unprecedented levels of financial support to all sorts. But this is not the case in many countries. Our media has been full of the impact of COVID-19 here in the UK and sometimes in other parts of Europe but we hear very little about how other countries are being impacted and how they are 
coping with the virus when they're already facing severe poverty. For example, several countries in East Africa are currently being devastated by a plague of locusts, billions of them, which are totally ravaging their crops. Crops on which entire nations depend for their daily food. And on top of this, in the past few days, there has been terrible flooding in Rwanda and Kenya and other parts of East Africa, with hundreds already killed. In Zimbabwe, the Catholic relief agency CAFOD tells us that there were already six million people facing hunger through drought and political chaos before coronavirus hit and pushed them into lockdown. Fortunately, in Zimbabwe, as in many sub-Saharan African countries, the incidence of COVID-19 is, at the moment, relatively no low. But of course, if it grows, as many fear it will do, it will put impossible strain on healthcare systems, which are already struggling. Healthcare systems that cannot even provide the basics, like gloves and painkillers and even medical staff. And that's particularly the case in places like Zimbabwe. And even now, the impact of lockdown is bringing a huge increase in poverty and hunger. I thought today, as we focus on the international situation, it would be a good opportunity for us to meet a family who are living in Zimbabwe and to hear firsthand from them how this situation is impacting them. Now, many of you will remember Ben and Lucinda Tizer, who are a young couple who were very much a part of St Andrews until a couple of years ago when they moved over to Zimbabwe. Lucinda's family are from Zambia and Ben's are from Zimbabwe. And Lucinda was part of our church council and their two little children uh, were both baptised here at St Andrews, Juliet and George. Now they've been joining us every Sunday on Facebook from Zimbabwe, joining our morning service here. So now here's a chance for us to meet them. Lucinda, um, it's lovely to have you with us all the way from Zimbabwe. And uh, I think you've got some others with you, some little people with you as well. Who, who have you got there? Juliet. Hi, Juliet. Yeah. Juliet's four. And then we've got George. Hi, George. George is one. <laughs> so, and they've um, been doing some painting, I think. Yes, George's we've... hands, Juliet. Let's see your hands. Here's your hands, George. Oh, yes, nice painty fingers. <laughs> yeah, so we've started school this week, but from home. So we're doing our activities at home, which is proving interesting. But we're managing so far with a little bit of paint on the walls here and there. Yes. And, and what, where's Ben at the moment? What's, what's he up to? I don't know what's Ben up to. Where's Ben at the moment? Um, so we've been lucky in that Ben works um, in the agricultural service industry. Uh, so he's counted as an essential worker. So he's um, he's out. He's at the Ministry of Agriculture right now, actually. Um, but he's been able to keep working pretty much from home, but then going out to do various farm trials occasionally. And he's got permission to do that. Um, so we've been lucky in that respect. Yes, and I'm guessing your work has come to a standstill. So my work, um, I, I was working um, for an investment fund here um, and I actually kind of took a little break in September because it was getting quite busy with the two children. Um, but I had hoped to go back at the beginning of April um, and that hasn't happened. Yeah. And we don't know when it will happen or if it will happen. So I'm kind of left slightly up the creek. Um, but with the children at home, it would be hard to work anyway. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, and tell us then, so there you are in your home in Zimbabwe, but um, that's not where you were when we knew you first. No, no, so I lived in... Um, Zambia. Zambia. I did live in Zambia. I lived in um, Fulham, in, in, well, in Barons Court from, I think it was 20. 12 to 2017 
uh, five years. And we lived opposite the church um, and yeah, we, we came in and very much enjoyed being part of the, the congregation for a number of years. Um, and then when we had children, uh, we just kind of ran out of room really um, and took the slightly drastic move to Zimbabwe, um, which so far has, has been fine. But um, as you say, it's quite, an, it's quite an unstable country. We don't know what's gonna happen. Um, so we always have that kind of anxiety at the back of our mind. Uh, and, and it's a country which is um, already struggling in all sorts of ways, even before the coronavirus came along. Um, with, Very much so, yeah. Yeah. So how, how has this impacted, um, I mean, what, what's, what's the impact on the country generally at the moment, do you think? How's, how's it faring? Um, so officially, I think we only have about 25 cases um, of coronavirus here according to official records um which seems low what we have to try work out is how accurate that is because yeah. we don't really know how much testing is is going on um and then we also have the problem of the the healthcare facilities here are very very um underfunded and if there was to be a situation kind of like what's happened in europe it would be catastrophic here. I mean, I, I don't know if they've got any ventilators here at the moment. Um, so low numbers is, is good. Um, they have put the country into lockdown. We're in week six of lockdown, um, which, yeah, on one hand, it is a good thing if it's containing the, the spread of this disease. Um, but then people here have to go to work every day to earn money to eat. Um, so if they're not doing that, it really is causing lots of lots of pain and hunger, and other problems are arising from the lockdown. So that that's difficult. Mm -hmm. And and do you reckon these are um, the, the reality of some of these problems we're not likely to see until after lockdown is lifted and in the coming months and years, perhaps? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, we're we're fortunate, as I said. You know, my husband's still working, and we. You know, we have a roof over our heads, we have a garden, we can eat. And you kind of don't really go out, you just pop out to the grocery shop. So you're not, we're not really seeing it. Um, then the journalists here, you, you don't know kind of what's, what's true and what's not true. You get different reports coming in. Um, but just kind of something that kind of hit home with, with me. I was at my local shop the other day um, and there's a little kind of flower store uh, next door to it, um, where there's, you know, these men who sell beautiful roses and beautiful bunches of flowers. Uh, and w when I do go past, I do try to support them. You know, it's nice to take a bunch of flowers to somebody if you're going to visit. And I drove past the other day and obviously it was unmanned, um, but just these rows and rows of dead flowers. Um, and it just, uh, I mean, it's, it, just, it just kind of hits home because you think, these guys were, it was hard enough for them to make a living in normal times as it was. Um, and you think, where are they now? And what's happening to them? And what are their families doing? Uh, and obviously that's just one very small example of what's happening all over the, the country. Yes, yes. Yes, the implications of this are just massive and much of it we're not seeing um, at the moment, are we? Yeah. 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 What about for you as a, a family personally? I mean, has it has it has it changed things for you, or has it changed your way of thinking even? Or um, um, I mean, uh, it's strange. I mean, I think before I would never have, I wouldn't have gone a single day where we just stayed at home with with the children and didn't see anybody. You always tried to organise at least some sort of activity, and now we've just done six weeks without going anywhere um, and it's interesting how self-contained the children can be you know you don't have to be running around and taking them to fun parks and things the whole time um, so Juliet's four and she'll kind of go off play her own imagine imaginary games for a certain amount of time um, they play together more the Juliet and George so that's that's nice to see um, yeah, and I guess we have slowed down a bit, uh, which definitely has its benefits. Mm, mm. Yeah. 
thank you. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm wondering. You know, you were you were very much involved in the church back here in Fulham. You were on the PCC, and uh, you know, a key member of the congregation here. So you're, you're someone for whom faith is a really important part of your life. And I'm just wondering uh, whether whether you're finding through this through the struggles that you're facing is your faith being stretched in any way are you learning new things are you discovering anything new about god um do you find yourself praying more or less um any 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 reflections on that yeah definitely and what i'm trying to do every evening when i when i do pray i'm trying to make the first and foremost thing is to say thank you and to be grateful. Because um, for us as a family, I mean, we, we have been so, so lucky compared to others. You know, as I said, we, we have space here, we have food to eat, we have a roof over our heads, we have each other, um, which is, is a lot more than, than lots of people in this country and around the world have. Um, so first of all, we've just got to be grateful. You know, we have our health um, and trying to remember that as the most important thing. Um, and then you have to try and and pay it forward, I guess. You know, because we're okay, then you've got to look and see how can you how can you reach out and how can you help to other others? What can we do to support people who aren't as fortunate as we are? Um, so those are the two things that I'm trying to kind of grapple with in the evenings um, and think what I can do. Um, and then in the bigger picture, I just, I mean, I think there's some kind of message coming fr from God in some way, you know, this international, these international lives that we lead flying everywhere, you know, is it, is it necessary? We just have to think about that when, when things calm down mm, mm, mm. yeah yeah Lucinda thank you so much it's uh, really special to know that you're with us on a Sunday morning and um, just for giving us a little bit of insight into life in Zimbabwe at the moment and uh, we will be praying for you and for Ben and for Juliet and George and for the people of Zimbabwe as they uh, face this massive struggle so thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you. Lucinda mentioned that her focus in these days is to be thankful to God and to think of ways to reach out to others whose situations are much more difficult than theirs. Loving God and loving their neighbors. In the reading today from Mark's gospel, Jesus gave a simple answer to the scribe's question, which is the greatest commandment? He said simply, love God and love your neighbor. Because it's by loving God that we are inspired to love our neighbors. And loving our neighbors is how we show, how we demonstrate that we are people who love God. When we get into the habit, as Lucinda was talking about, of being thankful to God for all the blessings that we have. So we are challenged to reach out to those whose circumstances are much, much harder than ours. One of my Rwandan friends, Elsie, messaged me yesterday from the midst of the calamities of the locusts, of the floods, of her father-in-law dying last week, and now coronavirus. And Elsie said, we try not to think ahead because we cannot change much. But our hope is in the one who holds the future. It is his love that we have to share. And he has all we need. Praise God for such inspiring faith in the midst of adversity. Amen. Let's join together as a response to what Leslie said in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, 
the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Our prayers today are being led by Verity Sherwin. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we pray for your church throughout the world in all its forms. Thank you that we can worship in safety and that we can praise you openly, even virtually at this time. We pray for all of those Christians around the world who are persecuted for their faith and who always have to pray in their homes in secret. Lord, we pray for wisdom for all our church leaders, especially at this difficult time when people need spiritual support and guidance. We thank you for Reverend Leslie, Reverend Anne and Jacob, and pray that you would uphold them in all of the work they do for our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we mark the 75th anniversary of VE Day, we thank you for peace and for all those who have sought to protect the peace we enjoy in this country. We pray for Syria, Yemen, and all places in the world where people suffer under armed conflict today. Lord, we pray for this world of yours, which we are so privileged to enjoy. We pray that you would learn to care for it. We would learn to care for it as you intend us to, and to respect all of creation. We pray for political leaders and policymakers, that they would take wise and thoughtful decisions. Lord, in this Christian Aid Week, we pray for the people of your creation throughout the world, especially those who suffer because of poverty and global inequality. We particularly lift to you those whose livelihoods are threatened because of climate change and drought, especially in the communities in Angola and Mozambique, with which our diocese is linked. Lord, we thank you for the work of Christian Aid and other organisations spreading your love and care to those most in need. Inspire us to reach out in generosity and love to those less privileged than ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift to you our community of St Andrews and all the people we know and love in this time of particular strain and anxiety. We pray that we might be strengthened through this difficult season, both in our community and in our relationships with you, as we are reminded of our dependency on you and how little we can control. Help us to trust and rely on you and to lift our fears and burdens to you each day. We pray for your peace on all those feeling lonely, anxious or uncertain at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick or in any kind of need. In particular, Pat and Len, Barbara King, Chrissy Barrack and family, Ben, Lucinda, Juliet and George in Zimbabwe, and Elsie and Nicholas Hitamana. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have recently died or whose anniversary of death falls near this time, including Colin King. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, we lift to you our own prayers and those on our own hearts. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are now going to share the peace. I hope that those of you who are watching in family groups will be able to share the peace between each other. But for all of us, whether virtually or in, in the same room, let us stand to share the peace together. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of eternal life. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness while angels and archangels and all the powers of creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory.
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with St Andrew, St Mary, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Saviour taught us, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one bread. The Lamb of God, you will take away the sin of the world. Have mercy.
Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So uh, we don't have an introducing slot today because we've had the interview already with Lucinda in Zimbabwe. So just straight on to a couple of notices. Maybe just to begin with a reminder that uh, through the week we are continuing to collect shopping, collect medicines, keep in contact with those who are isolated and vulnerable in the parish. So if you know of anybody who could benefit from that, then please let us know. Reverend Anne is coordinating that and we have a team of volunteers who are helping with that too. Um, we're also continuing with the homeless project through the week. Um, although many homeless people have been housed in hotels, not all have been, and so we're still getting 50 plus people uh, Saturday by Saturday for a takeaway service and showers. Um, and uh, we have some volunteers who are helping us with that. Otherwise, we've got the usual meetings and services going on through this week. Uh, I think they'll be coming up on your screen, so uh, don't forget to join us for the young people this afternoon with Jacob, for Compline this evening at 8.30, and for morning prayer throughout next week, Monday, Tuesday, Fr Thursday and Friday. So just before we sing our final hymn, which is led once again by members of St Andrew's Choral Evensong Choir. And thank you very much to them for uh, recording these uh, hymns for us. Let's ask God's blessing on ourselves, on those that we love, and on all those that we've been hearing about throughout this service. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the feet of sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.